good Sunday morning. We are back. This is block three inside Tennessee. So uh, when we left it, Dr. Briggs was talking about his position in terms of the so-called teachers and guns bill. He mentioned a number of things that uh, Tennessee actually is not so radical with this kind of legislation. It's something that's been looked at and passed by other states and that there are numerous safety steps. So Representative McKenzie, we want to hear from you and, and what the thoughts are of the Democrats in terms of why you all, and I don't think I'm putting words in your mouth, find this so concerning? Oh, it's definitely extremely concerning. You know, I, I, I don't know which states. I heard a lot of those states that, 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 that were rattled off. Most of those states have pretty tight uh, gun control laws, so there, there's a balance there, I'm sure, in those states. But as it relates to putting more guns into our school system, it doesn't make any sense. I have every confidence there's no way Knox County or any of those suburban counties in and around us would do that. Why? Doesn't make any sense. Think about it. You have a diminutive small person that's trained for 40 hours to have uh, enhanced carry. Most of the issues are going to come from inside the school building. A parent coming inside, maybe a six foot ten football player, basketball player getting into an altercation. A lot of what our law enforcement, their training academy is months and months and months. So to say, oh, okay, we're going to do a week's worth of training and empower you to always carry your weapon. What's going to happen when that person is, is, has to defend the weapon? What's going to happen if a person is assaulted? Does that mean the other person needs to be murdered? So there's all sorts of, of just things that can make this thing go horribly wrong horribly wrong there is no good reason to do this and if it is a shooter if a shooter's out there and there's mad chaos in a building you're going to have eight people running around with guns so when law enforcement comes oh no that's john he's okay mm -hmm. sally's okay but this other person we got to you know take him or her out think about it it makes absolutely no sense mm -hmm. it does make that does not make any sense whatsoever. So I'm glad that there, there there's some 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 off ramps. Uh, I'm sure the school that's in an urban area is going to take that off ramp. Every school in a suburban area will. But what what are we left with? We're left with people that are saying, "Pick me, pick me. I want to carry a gun." That person, as I've said uh, uh, time and time again, you don't want someone who's excited to be carrying a gun into our K-12 schools to get that training. He or she does not have the appropriate uh, mindset to deal with it, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. So if someone's excited about this, that's probably not the person that you want. Mm -hmm. and, and so what exactly are you left with? You know, there's all sorts of friendly fire. Look at what happened in Memphis. Horrible situation. You had an assailant, but the cop ended up dying by friendly fire. And those are trained individuals. What are we going to do when folks get a, a week's worth of training? And you're going to say, have at it. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's dangerous, extremely dangerous. Uh, I hate that we uh, uh, passed this this year. It, it was laying on the table because it was a bad bill last year. But, you know, folks folks uh, put it off the table, what we call, and passed it. So mm -hmm. it's going to be law. We're going to have to deal with it. It's just my hope that no uh, school system. And we'll, we'll, we'll take the state up on this. Uh, Sam mentioned last year, Vinay, you have gone over to Nashville for us to cover it. Uh, I think you might have been there this the past year as well. Just your thoughts about uh, what you noticed, your observations, maybe any contrast with last year? And I think overall, since the expulsion hearings that we saw last year, right. when um, House Republicans tried to expel three members of the Democratic Party, we've seen tensions, I think, just increase in the House. And that's why I want to ask um, Representative McKenzie, since those expulsion hearings, do you think that Democrats and maybe members of uh, the gallery have crossed the line at times? You know, the problem is, and I, I'll answer your question, but you're absolutely right. The tensions have increased. When you look at the effect, the effect of the uh, of, of the bottle explosion, the, the bottle of Coca-Cola exploding and getting all over you, wasn't you opening it up. It was the fact that the agitation that went into it before you open it up. They passed horrible rules that limit our voices even more, tried to pass rules to have to where our citizens can't even put us back in if the body puts us out 
They shut us down, called for the question, which means mm -hmm. eliminating debate with nothing said about it on the House floor time and time and time again. So, yes, do people act out? Yes, they act out. We are frustrated. This is a very frustrating time. And I'm really hoping that, one, that we have to flip some seats just to get their attention. Because right now in the House, they really are, they are drunk with power. They listen to the 75 of them in the room and no one else. We're getting emails from our constituents. They're getting emails. I'm being copied on it, saying don't do this piece of legislation. That, that piece of legislation doesn't make sense overwhelmingly, but they're listening to themselves. So yes, are, the, are some of the Democrats acting out and getting frustrated? Yes, but it's not without cause. That agitation is constant. It's, it's nonstop and, and it needs to stop. And Dr. Briggs, uh, in that you obviously are uh, have the Senate sort of perspective. It, it's been a little bit better behaved, I would say, there perhaps. But we've got about a minute. Address that. What you've noticed in terms of the Senate, and can it get any better? Can the relationships be improved? Well, I, I would disagree with one thing you said. Uh, it's not a little bit better. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think we've had any problems at all in the last two years. We had one brief episode, one brief episode this year where it got rowdy in the gallery that it had to be cleared. Uh, we have not had the name calling. We've not had, we, we have just not had any of those type of issues uh, on the Senate floor at all. I mean, these are two different worlds. Uh, and we've not even really even had the protesters outside the Senate chambers like the House has. Uh, and, I think we treat our colleagues in the Senate with respect both ways, and it's all a two-way street. Uh, we had uh, Monday evening, we had our end of session uh, get together, and we had uh, we had uh, the Democrats were there, mm -hmm. uh, the Republicans. Wonderful evening to, together. Uh, it was very cordial, very friendly. So uh, we just uh, now we're a little older, a little bit more settled. But we just. <laughs> It tells you there are benefits to being older and wiser. Okay, we've got one more commercial break and we're coming back for final thoughts. You're watching Inside Tennessee.